Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. It has been a while. Um, actually, you've probably seen a different video prior to this one, but um, I ended up taking an accidental break from YouTube. I was not planning on it. I just, life got a bit busy and then we had a couple of trips and it just all got ahead of me and I wasn't able to keep on top of things with everything else and my work and all of that stuff. Anyway, all that being said, I just mentioned we'd been on a couple of trips and um, so back in June we went to Cornwall for a week here in the UK and then last week actually we went away for a week with my in-laws um, to a place, uh, they have a timeshare up near Nottingham, Lincoln area and so we went up there for a week with them and that was really fun and uh, yeah so I just wanted to show you what art supplies I took with me on, on these trips. Now I did take these art supplies with me on the Cornwall trip but I didn't paint a single thing while we were in Cornwall, it just didn't work out that way. Um, which is fine, it just means we were out a lot playing, doing things, going to the beach, exploring and all that sort of stuff which is great. Originally we had forecasts um, of a lot of rain so the fact that we actually had a lot of nice weather was great. Also the place we were staying wasn't really well suited for painting, there wasn't any great lighting for painting in the evenings and we were out during the day so there was no real options there. Um, but I did take my painting supplies with me to this last week that we went away and I did a lot of painting then and I have the paintings that I did do here to share with you. Now I actually took a lot more supplies than this because both trips were road trip holidays and we had a car so wasn't as limited on space as I would be if we were flying somewhere. So um, and I'd never really taken art supplies with me on a trip before so I wasn't entirely sure what I would want to have but instead of and I did actually film a video prior to leaving I just didn't have time to sit down and edit it and publish it before we left. Um, so I thought instead of showing you that video, which is super long, um, and all the things that I took with me that I didn't end up using, I thought it might be better to show you what I took with me that I did use. And so this will also help me going forward if for future trips to know what to take, that I could minimise what supplies I'm taking with me and all of that sort of stuff. Okay. So starting off with this here, I'll, I'll move this out of the way in a second. So from our Cornwall trip, I ended up printing off a bunch of photos to use as um, reference to paint from. So we have some pictures. We went to the Eden Project, um, beach photos from where we were. This was one I actually painted and I'll keep that aside to sh show you next to the painting. Um, I think I also did um, this one as well. Uh, just some different photos. I didn't obviously paint from all of them, but I quite like having physical pictures to paint from or physical things rather than having to look at a screen all the time. Um, and yeah, so it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Cornwall was a great trip. I managed to get some really lovely photos to use for reference. Different flowers. Um, well, these ones are just beautiful. Um, yeah, so I took a bunch of these. Oh, this one I also painted from. Um, so I took these photos with me to use as a reference on the trip. Those were very handy, definitely use those. In terms of paints that I took with me, I took my bean paints and actually this is a little metal tin. I never really showed this in my bean paints video because I did it after the fact. I had one of these little tins that I wasn't using and I took out the little palette insert that comes with it and all 12 of my paints fit in quite nicely and I wedged in some tissues on either side uh, to stop them moving around. As you can see, they're not secured in super tight, but I don't really plan on tipping my palette upside down. But yeah, I took this along with me, and I took this as well because I don't have like a bright red or a purple on this palette. And sometimes I like using the purple to darken up greens, and sometimes, and it's just nice to have a bright red sometimes. I took these with me because I, I still hadn't gotten around to filming my beam paints paint with me video, which I wanted to do, which is probably the video you'll see prior to this one because I wanted that to go up after I did my bean paints haul and swatching video. Um, I had hoped to get that done before we went to Cornwall, but again, like I said, didn't have time. Didn't have time after we got back, and so I took these with me on our second trip um, last week, and I did do the a couple of paintings with the bean paints. So those will be in the bean paints sort of like paint with me video, and I kind of want to paint with them a lot more as well and get a bit more used to them. 
Um, they are definitely a more subtle paint than my more pro my professional commercially available paints. The second palette I took with me was my Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolours palette. Um, if you're interested in finding out what colours I have in this palette, I do have a swatching video where I created this swatch card and I talk through all the different colours and pigments that are in this palette. But this is the one that I took with me to paint from mostly, mainly because um, it has the most colours in it and so there again, I whilst I don't use all colours in every painting, in fact I probably use around five to seven colours for most paintings, I like having options and um, yeah I don't like, I, as much as I appreciate the value of having a limited palette, um, I like having options and so I don't like to limit myself. Sometimes I do but I like to have them, I like to have options with me. So there's that. So those were the paints that took me. I really love working with them. They're not the easiest at re-wetting compared to some other brands, but they do re-wet really well, especially I leave a little drop of water on each paint before I start just to let it like, get nice and reactivated and creamy. Um, other things I took with me, I took two of these um, water cups. I actually have another one as well that's a slightly different style. It's like a three cup one, it's smaller. So I took these and that one just so that when my daughter wanted to do some painting, she could use one of these and I had some other options as well. So they're great. These are by Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell and they're called Click and Go. So these collapsible water cups, so they just collapse down to not be that big and they fit in quite nicely amongst all my stuff so that's what I use for water pots um, I just mentioned about dropping water onto my paints you can just use your paintbrush but I find it's quicker to just use a pipette to just put a few drops on each of the pans um, I took a mechanical pencil uh, it has got an eraser on it, but I did have a kneadable eraser with me as well, which I don't know where that's gone right now. I think I've put it away, but I did have a kneadable eraser as well. Just some masking tape to mask off some edges, which I think I only ended up using this once or twice. Um, a, uh, what's this called? It's like a little um, uh, block separator. So when I, I took a block of paper with me, which I just remember I'm taking the paper out to show you, but uh, one of the two of the pads of paper blocks I took with me were blocks. So to get the sheets off, you need to kind of use a like a um, palette knife or one of these little contraptions to scrape it to go around the edge and pull it off. Sorry if you can hear that delivery truck backing up down our road. Um, I took a white Posca pen. Ooh just with some highlights and stuff on a couple of paintings. I used that a few times. I did also take some white gouache, but I didn't end up using that. Um, I took a couple of different pens and this was the only one I ended up using. It is the Unipin Fine Line 0 0.2 and it's a um, waterproof pigment liner. So it's pretty fine, uh, creates pretty fine lines and it's great all round sort of pen. And then for paint brushes, took a few different paint brushes. I mainly took um, inexpensive brushes as well because I didn't want all my good brushes to get potentially damaged or anything or lost, left behind, whatever. Um, so I took this number six uh, round major brushes brush. This is a really inexpensive brush but it's also a really good synthetic, synthetic brush and I actually really enjoy using it. Um, and then I have this set of uh, portable paint brushes which I did actually get specifically for this trip these travel brushes and I think I got them from AliExpress um, and they worked pretty well actually I used these the most on this trip so I got them in four sizes three sizes sorry uh, the smallest one here is a size one they don't really correlate to anything um, really uh, they're not really comparable to other things I say this size one is more like a size four in like more standard brush sizes uh, then this one is a size 4, which again I think is probably more like a size 6. I mean like if I compare it to the 6 that I have here, it's, it's actually a little bit bigger. Not sure if that's focusing. There we go. And then the last one I got was, it's called a size 6, but this is more like a 10 or a 12. See that there? So yeah, these were really great. I used these for a lot of the paintings that I did whilst we were away. Um, I also have this Royal and Langnickel Zen brush. It's in a small medium size is what it's called, but it's a mop brush. It's one of their 
their version of a mop brush but it was fairly inexpensive so I didn't want to take any of my more expensive mop brushes with me and it was new so I wanted to this is one I got recently as well before the trip that I wanted to try it out so I used this as like larger washes and um, wetting the paper um, and then I also took a half inch studio synthetic brush um, I thought it was really quite fun and I did use this for one entire painting pretty much I did use the um, a smaller round brush towards the end for some details but I use this to do most of the painting which I'll show you in a bit um, and I also took my Skoda size 6 water brush uh, water brush sorry travel brush as well this is the Skoda Ultimo so I really like it it's like a faux squirrel it's really nice and um, holds a lot of water and paint and the final thing that I got that I took with me I keep saying I got that I took with me was this little Chinese calligraphy bamboo brush again it's synthetic I actually took three of these one is smaller and the other one is slightly bigger but this was the one I ended up using the most for like little fine details as well it, it comes to a really nice sharp point when wet and and yeah so that was a good one for this trip as well I used that like I said for a lot of details um, those were all the little things that I took with me, little like stationary type stuff. I thought I'd pull out the paper that I took with me to be able to share with you nicely. Um, I did actually end up taking a couple of other things as well, but I didn't use those, so I'm not showing those here. I actually took a sketchbook, which or a watercolour sketchbook. Never used it, so I'm not going to share that now. I got this. I've got a couple of these sketchbooks. These. Arteza watercolour pads and the expert paper. This is this is cellulose paper, but I took this with me as kind of like a swatch paper to like test out colour mixes and stuff to make sure I was getting the right sort of colours that I wanted. I kind of used this as a bit of like an experimental book, a bit of a warm-up, testing out colours, stuff like that. Like it's not a super it's not great paper. I mean it's fine. Paper's not terrible, but it's it's not really what I like to use, so I like using it as like an, like I said, experimental paper. I have a couple of these, so they're quite handy for things like that, or just random swatches. I took this paper, uh, De La Rowney Aquafine uh, A4 size. This is a cellulose paper that I actually really do enjoy. I do quite like the effects I get with painting on this, but I actually mainly took it. It's fairly inexpensive here in the UK, um, and I took this mainly for my daughter to use, and she did a couple of paintings she didn't actually paint as much on this trip as I expected she would she did she my daughter's four by the way and these were her two adaptations or depictions of Mary Mary quite contrary from the nursery rhyme and these are all her pre-maids in a row and that's Mary at the top there um, and, and again same here the blue ones are the flowers and Mary's the one in, is red um, so these were her little paintings that she did on the Dale Rowney Aquafine. Like I said, it's fairly inexpensive. This is the 12 sheet pad and I actually ended up ordering a larger 50 sheet jumbo pad as well of this because it's really, it's fun to play around with. It's inexpensive and I think I got the 50 sheet pad for something like 10 or 12 pounds on Amazon. So I'll, if I remember, I'll leave a link to it below. I'll try and link as many of these supplies as I can below. A lot of them are from Jackson's. So I'll leave a general Jackson's affiliate link down below, which you can, um, use to find the different products you can just search on their website and the affiliate links are all that means is if you purchase something after clicking through one of those links then i get a small commission it doesn't cost you anything extra and it's just another way you can help out this channel which i really appreciate i really appreciate when you guys use the affiliate links affiliate links and um it really does help me out a lot more than you realize anyway all that to say i enjoy playing with this paper and that's what I took for my daughter to play around with and myself if I wanted to. And those are the paintings she did. I also took this small Paul Rubens watercolour block. I'd been wanting to play around with it a lot more. I got this a while ago, did a couple of paintings on it, but hadn't really used it much recently. And it's 100% cotton watercolour paper. The size is 5.3 by 7.6 inches. And there's 20 uh, sheets in this block and it's 300 GSM pretty standard sort of weight and I did do a few paintings on this one I actually did uh, this painting a painting of this I should say not that's not a painting obviously that's a photograph I'm trying to find it 
here we go and that's how it turned out i'm super chuffed with it i'm not super into realism and doing like super realistic paintings it was more just a my interpretation and my adaptation of it but i think it turned out really well and i'm super happy with how this um turned out i think there might have been an issue with the sizing on this first page because the other pages i painted on were fine you can see there's like a bit of darkness all around the edge and whenever I put any paint close to the edge of the paper it just kind of immediately sunk in and sat there and wouldn't budge. So that's not intentional like but it kind of looks like an intentional vignette type effect uh, but it wasn't what I was expecting <laughs> when I painted this. I kind of later felt like I should have put a white border around it with masking tape but it's fine. But yeah so I did this with my Winsor & Newton paints. Absolutely love how this turned out. Like I said it's not identical, it never was intended to be, it was just meant to be a fun experiment. Uh, the one thing I did learn from this was I really need to get better at preserving my highlights in um, in my paintings because I lost my highlights very quickly and had to use some white um, Posca pen to get those back. Uh, then some of the other paintings that I did. Uh, just some fun loose florals, nothing too difficult there. Uh, this was another one. Um, it's got this little bouquet. Uh, just this really quick little seaside sketch. And this little floral border. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I was going to write something like happy birthday in the middle and use it as like a birthday card. But those are the ones that I, those are the paintings that I did on the Paul Rubens paper and I do really like it. It's a really nice cotton watercolour paper, fairly affordable and um, you can get it either on Amazon or on AliExpress I believe. But I'll try and leave an Amazon link below if you are interested in that. The other paper that I took and I used a lot of was this Hannah Mule um, Venita, Venito. I'm not sure how it's actually pronounced, Benito paper. It's uh, 325 GSM, so slightly thicker than standard watercolour paper, which is usually around 300 or 140 pounds. It's rough and cold pressed, so I think one side of the paper is more smooth than the other. So I painted on the rough side. And um, it's a 9 by 12 or 9.4 by 12.6 block. Again, there's 12 sheets in this block. I used probably about half the block. And it's it's um, cellulose paper, it's not cotton. But I actually really enjoyed painting on this. This was a recent purchase as well, um, which I got before we went away. I ordered this, I ordered two of these actually from the SAA or the Society for All Artists here in the UK. Um, this paper was going out of stock, so it was on sale. And so I grabbed two, uh, two blocks of it just to try it out and I quite well, enjoy it. So I can't give you a link for this because it's disconnected because this continued here but um if you look it up you might be able to find somewhere local to you that stocks it so the paintings that i did on that one uh this was one that i did based off one of the photos I'm trying to find the best way to show you and this one i painted mostly with the flat brush that i took which was quite fun it was i really like how the buildings turned out it was just a fun way of playing around um, this was one that I painted with bean paints. I wasn't entirely happy with the finished results, but I think that's more the paper. Uh, the paper isn't great for layering because it is cellulose paper and in particular with the bean paints, it seems to be lifting really easily. So this was the photograph of um, my daughter and my husband at the Eden Project. And I kind of admitted all the other people and just had my daughter there with her umbrella. Um, and it was just meant to be like a loose, abstract, impressionistic sort of interpretation of the photo. Which I quite I quite like how it turned out overall, but I would like to try it again, I think. And have another go at that. I think I could do a better job of it. Um, this was another one that I did. I really love how this one turned out. And it's probably because I used the Winsor & Newton paints that I am more used to. They're slightly more vibrant. And um, I did make one mistake where I dropped a bit of water on the paper there and tried to save it. And then, anyway... Like I said, it lifts really easily. And this was the original photo. That was the inspiration. Again, I omitted the people just because I wanted to keep it nice and simple. Um, but I'm really chuffed with how this one turned out. This one was really fun. Um, and then I've got a couple of florals that I did. This one was based with the Winsor & Newton paints. Then I also did this one with the bean paints as well. So I think this one and the... 
and possibly this one i'm not sure which ones are going to end up in the video if the video ends up being too long it might just be one of the paintings but the bean paint bean paints paint along video will have one or both of these paintings in it um but yeah i kind of want to paint with those bean paints a little bit more as well to get more used to them try them on different papers i'm curious how they're going to react in a painting on cotton paper for example um other things that i took with me i took this sketchbook watercolor sketchbook for my daughter i got this a long time ago didn't i tried out the paper on the first page you can see i ripped it out um didn't like it at all for myself but i kept it for my daughter to use uh she, like i said she didn't do much painting while we were on this trip but she did paint these two pages which is kind of funny because she painted tomatoes but uh fun fact about my daughter she loves the color red but hates tomatoes she won't eat them uh she doesn't mind like sauces and stuff with them in it but she won't eat just a tomato so um so yeah it's funny that she's obsessed with painting tomatoes that she doesn't like to eat um, so that was what she painted and for her i actually took her own little watercolor set um that i got for her for this trip in particular and i was really surprised by how good this watercolor set was i'm just trying to get all the bits out here so I can, okay so i took her a bunch of paint brushes um these mermaid tail paint brushes i picked up from hobbycraft here in the uk and i think you can still get them from hobbycraft and i know that i've seen something similar to these at the range also here in the uk uh, so i took some of those paint brushes for her i took a couple of water brushes because she's got some of these magic paint books where it's literally just like a coloring book but you just use a water brush or a paint brush and water um, and when you paint over the lines, it releases pigment and then you can color it that way. So it's kind of a mess free painting option. Uh, so I took those, I took a couple of those books with me and these water brushes, which we had filled up with water and in the car or when we were waiting at a restaurant, she could do a bit of painting. And that was actually a really good activity for her to have like for on the go, something a bit different. And then for paints, she did have a large, she does have a larger paint set, which I just didn't want to take. It was quite bulky to take on this trip. So I actually ordered her this one from Amazon. Again, it was only like seven pounds. So I had very little expectation for it. But in actual fact, this was such an amazing little find. Honestly, I'll leave a link to it below. For seven pounds, I was not expecting to get pigment or light fast information, but that's what it came with. So it comes, comes with a little swatch card. So I did some swatches for her. It got a little bit messy, but I did her swatches for her. And it comes with this um, cover page. I'm not sure how well you can see that there because it's quite shiny but it has pigment information and light fastness ratings and it's got actual genuine like proper pigments in it like pv29 pv23 for dioxazine purple um obviously the cad there's no true cadmiums cobalts or like cerulean pigments which is fine for seven pounds i was not expecting that i wasn't even expecting to get any actual pigment information in here now the purple has stayed a bit gooey because it must have been a bit damp when I put the when I put this away I'm just gonna squidge that back so the little paint set that I got from her for her has 24 colors in it it does have a white and a black um which is pretty standard with these sorts of beginner sets but it has a really good range of colors and like I said they all have actual pigment information which is rare to find on these cheaper sort of craft sets and the quality of the paint is actually pre is also really decent as well what i might do is like a separate little review video on these paints um and i think they're still available for like seven pounds or something on amazon so i'll definitely leave a link to this one below as well if you are buying for a child um there's no toxic pigments in this set that i can see obviously you're not supposed to eat paint so not for anyone too little but um 
like I can trust my four year old with this, although in fairness, like it's not like I leave her to paint on her own anyway. I'm usually with her when she's painting, so um, you know, you know your own child. But it's fine for a child or like a teenager or someone who's getting into painting. These paints are pretty decent quality and from what I can tell from how little I've used them so far, they won't get in your way when you're trying to learn watercolours. Like they're not going to um hinder your learning experience. Um so yeah really really great affordable set so like i said i'll probably do a separate video on this at some point i'm going to leave that to for those pigments to dry a bit more those paints to dry other things that i took with me i took a couple of these little um rags cloths um they're like these are like gauze ones i got them from my mother-in-law she works in the hospital and she had a bunch of these lying around their house before they moved so i got a bunch of these but whatever rags i use some tea towels i use tea towels as well sometimes um, instead of uh, tissue paper or kitchen roll or anything like that, kitchen towel, um, I use these because then I can wash them and reuse them, less wastage that way. All right, and that's pretty much everything that I took with me on our trip. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys again soon. If you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.